hi in this tutorial we are going to import a model and uh, define assembly constraints in space claim and uh, we at the end of the tutorial we will be able to move the assembly in this fashion okay so let's get started so we have downloaded this uh, model from engine concept and this is a SOLIDWORKS file that we have downloaded let's go to open and this is assembly file click on it so this is how it is loaded so for time being we'll just select this component go to display color make something and let's make it translucent okay and as you can see this slight problem with the piston cylinder assembly this is the cylinder and this is the piston and when you look here there is certain offset between the connecting rod and the piston that will repair in this file so probably this is the problem with the original file itself there is no problem with the space claim reading it okay so these are the different components here now let's start with uh, this component housing will ground it using anchor condition so that is grounded let's expand all now we need to create a revolute joint between the cra this crank and the housing so for that we need to select this cylinder and uh, as you can see or maybe like we click on align first click on this cylinder and we have to select the second cylinder so for that we'll have to use the mouse scroll once twice so that internal cylinder of the housing is highlighted click on it so our align is created this is a cylindrical in nature because we have selected two cylindrical surfaces now to make it revolute joint we need to have a planar constant as well so that can be in the terms of tangent so tangent we need to select two planes so we again use the mouse so this is one of the surfaces and this is another surface so if you click on tangent these two surfaces are now mated okay so that is done now we'll we need to create a revolute between a crank and this uh, gear here so this is the axis so let's do it click on align we then can select this circle and for the gear we come here Okay, this this one looks okay. We click on this, so another line is created. Now we need to again create tangent between this surface and this one. That is also done. Okay, we have come till here. We need to make this uh, rigid actually because this is not having any relative motion with respect to the housing. So we can select this and either you can click on anchor or you can select this and the housing and then there is something called as rigid. So we make it rigid because yeah, there is no relative motion between housing and the uh, external gear. Now the interesting concept of uh, external gears needs to be done for that uh, I had a similar tutorial on uh, sorry this is internal gear I have a similar tutorial on external gear so we need to find uh, the pitch point between this gear and this gear okay so for that uh, what we can do is we can measure the distance between the circles of this and this go to measure it says the distance is 20 mm okay 
and uh, we also need to measure the number of teeth let me disable uh, hide this so if you click on this any of the surface and go to selection tab and all coaxial protrusion it says number of faces is 20 so number of teeth of the uh, in, uh, gear here is 20 so similarly we can come here select any of the protrusion it says uh, it doesn't have protrusion maybe we can select all equal radius cylinders okay here it says 40 so the ratio of number of teeth is 1 is to 2 okay so the diameter the ratio of the diameter should dot so be the same that would be 1 is to 2 so since only we know the distance between these two is 20 mm so let's have circles created on this plane okay so I can select this and the diameter is you can move around it says around around 40 should be fine but still to make sure that we have uh, the right um, number we go with the distance between these two so that was 20 mm we have to multiply by 2 because that is the distance and now we are go going to get the diameter and then we multiply with the number of teeth in this gear so that was 20 and uh, then we divided divide by the difference of the gears so that is 20 so it is 40 mm in this case okay so similarly we s create another s we have to create another circle and to find the center point okay this is the center point and you can either go take here it's almost uh, 78 so actually it is 80 if we calculate it so I've done it 80 okay so once this is done we need to make them as uh, construction lines okay so select this circle and another circle and go to construction on off and after that we go to solid view select these two circle and create surfaces of arbitrary uh, dimension so this is just for our gear purpose okay so these two surfaces were created at the top level we'll have to move them to the component level so I move this surface to this so that these two are uh, in the same component similarly this needs to be moved to here okay I'll move this down now we can select gear and choose this and this so gear is done let's now we need to have okay align uh, revolute joint between uh, there seems to be some problem here oops I clicked on align it should have been gear so let's do it again select these two surfaces click on gear okay here we go we have a gear constraint here okay so between this and this uh, we need to have a revolute joint so for that we click on align select this surface cylinder surface select the second one so that is done we need a planar between this and this that is also done now we need to create okay so for this let's go we activate this component and we need to get the center plane between this plane and that plane the other pl plane here so for that we go to insert or uh, we select these two surfaces first go to insert and click on plane okay, this plane is inside this component now okay similarly we need a similar plane here we activate the piston we select this surface 
we select let's hide it for time being we select this surface go to insert go to plane okay so this is done we now come back to the assembly make it active now we need to select uh, give a tangent between this and this plane so as you can see the piston moved towards it okay so next we need to create a rev a cylindrical joint between this cylinder and this so that is also done so now what we are left with is the last joint but as you can see there is an offset here okay so that is because there was a problem with the model itself so how do we make sure that we do this in space claim is it's very simple we select this cylinder we click on move and okay click on the side direction go to up to and select the center that's it though our assembly is model now let's go to front view and uh, we need to select this component first and then we start moving it as you can see uh, the gear is not moving properly so that is because uh, this is an internal gear and we will have to manually reverse rotation direction okay so once that is done we select the crank again and we start moving it so as you can see uh, rotation of the crank has results in the vertical direction movement of the piston so the reason why the movement of this is uh, vertical is because of an explanation given in this website uh, which says that any point on the diameter pitch diameter of the inside gear will move back and forth in a straight line so that we have seen in our simulation okay so we have an addition Ta uh, tab AC motion which is a motion and dynamic simulation add-in so we can also give rotation to it and we start simulation and uh, what we were mu moving by hand in space claim can be done using this plugin we can do animation in the reverse direction and lots of features are available in AC motion please explore Thank you.